This week we're going to be working on preparing your data for analysis. Many min instruments have reverse scored items, so it's very important that you look carefully at the scoring instructions for each of the instruments that you are using. And if we go back to the instrument that we uh, referred to in the last couple of weeks, the Interpersonal Support Evaluation List, or the ISOL, you will notice if you scroll down to the bottom that this instrument has many different reverse scored items. 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 17, and so on. And it's important that we reverse score those particular items both on the pre-test and the post-test. Otherwise, the results won't make any sense. Um, a reverse scored item, just to give you an example, is when a high number, if somebody uh, clicks on the, um, say a three on, a, on this Likert scale from zero to three and says it's definitely true, what it means in reality is that the question is asked in a way that it reflects the opposite of the way that the scale is pulling for. So um, in this particular instrument that's, that's looking for how much so social support somebody has in one's life, this now, question number 40, I have a hard time keeping pace with my friends, is pulling for the opposite of social support. So if somebody says definitely true, that's an indicator that they have low support. So in order for their response to make sense, those, that response has to get reverse scored. So we need to do that in our database for each of the items here. So this is how you would go about reverse scoring items in SPSS. First of all, you need to insert a variable for each of the items that are reverse scored. You can do that on this front page by double clicking to the right of the variable that you want to reverse score and then click insert variable. Now you notice it just comes up with an arbitrary name. Um, three, this item three for the scale is reverse scored. I'm going to go to the variable view in order to in order to define our variable. And what I like to do is name it I, the same name as the forward scored item. So ISL pre, I, sorry, ISL 3 pre, but put an R, capital R, at the end of it because that's pretty standard convention. So you can clearly tell what is the reverse scored item and what is the forward scored item. We need to make the um, width and decimal places the same. Now you can copy this uh, Likert scale from a prior field, copy, right click, and then paste. And again, this is ordinal data because it's a Likert scale. Okay, the next item that has to be reverse scored is number six. You can also insert variables on this screen. And again, you click, you right click on the item, the uh, variable after the one that you want to reverse score and click insert variable. So again, we're going to reverse score number six and the reverse scored item will be just after um, the forward scored item six. So it's pre-R. Okay, now I have already gone through and entered the rest of these items because there were many of them. So everyone now that needs to be reverse scored, um, it has, has a new variable that indicates the reverse scored numbers. I do not recommend that you reverse score on top of the original data. Um, it is too easy to wipe out something, make a mistake, and then you will not have access to your, your original data if you copy into the same field. I always recommend that you create a new field and name it by the same name as the original, just with an R after it. Okay, so we go back to the data view, and now we're going to talk about Okay, how do we calculate these? 
this again has many, many reverse scored items, and it's possible to do all of the reverse scoring in one fell swoop. So you would click on Transform, and you would click on Recode into a different variable. Now I've already entered all of them other than the two that we just reverse scored and we just created variables for. So let's just add those last two. Um, you click on the forward scored item, in this case ISL3 Pre, and then in this right hand column you have to type in the name of the new variable that's going to be the reverse of the original. And in this case, it's ISL3 3 R. Now, we created those variables already, and it's going to mention that. It says this variable name duplicates an existing variable name. That's because we already created it, and that's okay. I actually like doing it that way because it's an extra extra check that I've spelled things correctly. If it didn't give me that warning, I know I spelled something wrong. Okay, then we're going to add number six. Click on the right arrow. Put the new variable name, ISL6 pre R. It already exists because we created it. Okay, so now, because I've already entered all of the rest of them, we have to tell it what the old and the new values are. So click on old and new values. Um, we've all, already got them entered here, but the way that you, let's, let's get rid of this last one so you can see the process. So I've already told it that if it, somebody originally uh, entered a zero as their response, the reverse scored number would be a three. If they entered a 1, it gets reverse scored to a 2. If they had entered a 2 originally, it gets reverse scored to a 1. And uh, here's where you type in the old value, 3, would get reverse scored into a 0. And we'll add that to our list. So it's the opposite of what they had actually entered when, when or indicated when they filled out the instrument. Now I'm going to click Continue. That will bring me back. And now when I click OK, it's going to compute the variables for each of the reverse scored items because I have, have them all listed here. That way you don't have to do them one by one. But always do it in the manner that's going to be the most accurate. If it's easier to be accurate doing it one at a time, do it one at a time. Okay, I'm going to click on OK. So it tells me it did that. I don't want that. And you can see now the values in ISL3 pre R are the opposite of what they were in pre. Always go back to the data, make sure that it did it correctly. Um, six is the same way, it reverse scored the items. Um, nine is a reverse scored item, so a previous answer of three is now a zero. It has worked. So this week, you're going to have to reverse score any items in the instrument um, that you, where you entered every single variable. If there are reverse scored items, you need to reverse score them in your database. The next thing that you're going to need to do this week is total your subscales, if there are subscales. Going back to our measure, this instrument has four subscales. Okay, the four subscales are tangible support, belonging support, self-esteem support, and appraisal support. So we need to create variables so we can compute those subscales. And I'm going to go back to the variable view, although you could enter them on this view as well. Um, I would want to have the pretest subscales directly at the end of the variables for the ISL. So you could enter them here, insert variable, or you can go to the variable view where you have to go to put in the name anyway. So let's do it there. I've already entered the tangible support. 
subscale. Um, belonging support is the next. And I would name that BEL PRE. Oops. PRE. So BEL stands for belonging. I'm going to enter another one for the next. And I might as well go ahead and do the next variable. Okay, so we need a subscale for self esteem support and appraisal and appraisal support. Self-esteem support, S-E, pre, and appraisal support would be A-P-P, -P, pre. So just names that indicate that you're going to be able to remember what they mean, and if there's any doubt, you can always put a label in here, tangible support, pre. If, if there's any question, um, these are pretty simple. So you don't necessarily need to label them. I'm going to change the field sizes to not allow for any decimals because these are whole numbers. And again, this is still ordinal data because this is the um, sum of the Likert scale data, so it's still ordinal. I have already entered the variables for the post-test subscales. So we have the same names except with post at the end of them. So we'll be able to calculate both pre- and post-test for the four um, subscales in this measure.